Hey everyone, uh, it's been a while since I've shot a video and um, I thought this would be a good one to, to get back on in the game with, which is uh, a video on what equipment I'm going to be using while I'm shooting here in um, Vietnam. We're on an extended trip to Vietnam. We're going to be here for a couple of months. We've been here for a couple of weeks now and uh, I've been getting out and shooting every day and posting to Instagram and some of you out there on Instagram had asked what was I shooting um, for this trip in Vietnam so I thought well maybe I, it's a good chance to get back on YouTube and uh, shoot a video on the equipment that I'm using for street photography and travel photography while we're here in uh, Vietnam. In another video I'm going to look at this, the uh, studio equipment, the medium format equipment that, uh, equipment that I brought with me as well. Um, and actually that kind of factors into the choice of camera system that I use or decided to use for the street uh, and travel photography portion of the trip. Uh, specifically, um, it was, uh, you know, a couple of things. Number one, just like the amount of equipment that I was going to bring on this trip. Uh, number two, um, more stringent weight restrictions on carry-on baggage recently uh, for airlines really played a role. And, uh, and then number three is just like sort of simplicity and ease of getting out and shooting. So just, and, and also like a little bit of the, just make it simple and make it fun sort of method all, you know, idea, uh, which is what it should be all about anyways. So uh, previously on trips to uh, overseas and Vietnam, Vietnam specifically, because as some of you know, we, we have a home over here, so we periodically come over for fairly extended trips, and I try to get out and shoot as much as I can while we're here. And this year, because I have stepped up my photography game a lot and uh, you know I'm doing a lot of studio photography uh, advertising um, editorial photography uh, I just really wanted to get out and do a lot more photography while we were here in Vietnam and in the past I've done some uh, some shooting and you can see some of the work that I've shot in the past on uh, jimmymckenzie.com or on Instagram at jimmymckenzie72 but uh, in the past, I've used my Nikon system. Um, specifically, I was shooting and have been shooting for several years the Nikon D3. And I know that that's an old camera system, but that camera just does everything that I need it to in a, in a, in a package that is really just bomb-proof and, uh, and just so ergonomic and it just works very well for me. So I still shoot the, the Nikon D3, but that's not the camera system that I chose to bring with me for my everyday photography and street photography. Um, and so that camera actually I didn't bring, and, and that whole system, that whole lens or uh, ecosystem I left at home, which was a tough decision because it is such a capable and fantastic uh, camera for almost everything. Um, so I, yeah, I chose not to bring that camera. Uh, I did bring my medium format setup and some studio equipment uh, as well as like lighting and some modifiers, which um, a lot of it went into check lag luggage, but uh, the bulk of the weight for my carry-on was the medium format system, which I wanted to bring on the plane with me. So that sort of uh, made it impossible for me to bring the D3 as well as the Mamiya Leaf system that I'm shooting for medium format. But having said that, my medium format shooting is like a very small percentage of what I'm going to be doing while I'm here in Vietnam. Although I do plan on doing some editorial shoots. Uh, I've already done a little bit of playing around with product shoots. Um, and you know, I like the, I also brought a film back for my um, medium format camera. So I'm planning on getting out and shooting a little bit with the, uh, the uh, medium format film as well. Um, but that I'm going to put into another video. So what we're talking about today is for street photography and travel photography, what camera system did I decide to bring? Well, it's uh, an old chestnut, a gem, 
uh, a diamond in the rough, some would say, um, the Fuji X100, and this version is the S version, which was the first upgraded version from the original X100, uh, the second version of the camera. They're now on the fourth iteration of the camera with the X100F, which is a, also a fantastic camera, and I did look at purchasing that camera uh, to bring with me, but uh, you know, it's an expensive camera, and uh, it does have some pretty significant upgrades. It's a 24 megapixel camera versus this camera, which is a 16 uh, megapixel camera, uh, APS-C sensor. Um, but then a lot of the attributes of this camera are shared with the X100F, and I'm just going to focus on why I chose to go the route of a used X100S uh, instead of um, whatever other camera I could have potentially brought with me. Um, so this camera, as many of you know, is, is a fantastic uh, build quality. It's a camera that has manual controls, um, exposure, uh, shutter speed, dial on the top, exposure compensation on the top, uh, manual aperture ring, it's an f2 lens. The glass hasn't been changed throughout, as far as I know, the glass hasn't been changed throughout the entire series of, of uh, cameras, so the, uh, the optics on this, this, this lens are just fantastic. It's a 23 millimeter lens, and on a crop sensor, that's the equivalent field of view of a 35 millimeter full frame camera. So, and roughly, I would say probably a 70 um, millimeter equivalent on medium format. For those of you out there that shoot medium format, I'm talking about 645. Um, although many of us, and myself included, do shoot. Uh, medium format 6x7 or 6x8, 6x9, the really big, um, the really big frames, uh, there aren't sensors, there aren't digital equivalents to those sensors currently. So um, what I'm shooting um, currently across my entire spectrum is the APS-C on this camera, uh, then the full frame D3, and then the uh, Leaf uh, Aptus to digital back for my Mamiya system, so I have the, so I have a, a, a range of sensors that I that I can use, and um, honestly, the the sensor in this is really good. It's fantastic. Um, it's kind of a renowned uh, image quality, straight out of camera. Uh, really good raw conversion in camera with the um, with the Fuji film presets, all the different film presets. It is lacking a couple of the film presets that are in the newer versions, which are the uh, the XD2 and the um, and then that, the X100F, uh, which is sort of a baby XT2 with the fixed focal length lens, 24 megapixel, and then it has a couple more uh, film presets. But the film presets that are in here are fantastic. It's got Provia and, and Valvia. I like to use Valvia when I'm shooting um, street because it's just I like vivid colors. So, um, which kind of leads to the next point. Uh, shooting RAW plus JPEG, fine. But, as a street in terms of street photography, everyday walk around photography, my workflow, uh, while I do download the images to my computer and into Capture One, uh, and do RAW conversions on, on some of the files that, that are that I feel are really uh, exceptional. A lot of what I'm doing with this camera is uh, it's just sort of straight from camera uh, to the iPhone. So, um, because essentially what I'm doing is Instagram with this camera. So, what am I doing? I don't have Wi-Fi built into this camera. Then the, the T version, which is the next version, and the F, which is the most current version, have Wi-Fi built in. But what I did was I went and bought this little lightning to uh, SD card uh, converter that plugs into my iPhone. So I can just plug that right into the lightning port on my iPhone. And then basically I can import my photos right into photos. 
in the iPhone. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking those photos into an application called a little app that I downloaded called Darkroom. Uh, it's a paid app, but I, it's not super expensive. Um, you know, less than ten dollars, maybe even five. I can't really remember exactly how much it costs, but not an, it's not a super expensive app. And uh, from the JPEGs, uh, I'm just doing some touch-ups and some edits. I'm able to crop the frame. Um, really, there's a lot of controls that you can you can work through uh, Darkroom. There are some presets as well, and you can build your own presets. But I'm really not a filter guy. I'm more of a you know right out of camera. I mean, I, I, using the film profiles from the X100, you're getting some really nice files to work with anyways. And again, I am shooting raw, and later on I do back those up to uh, my computer. Uh, but for the most part, what I'm doing is straight from camera into darkroom, doing a few touch-ups. Um, surprisingly, you can do curves, you can do um, highlights, shadows, you can do, uh, in color editing, you can do uh, there's sliders for luminance and saturation. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of controls that you can do in Darkroom to, to tweak your files and then right from there right up to Instagram. So I can literally walk around. Every day I'm going out, walking around the streets, pretty much just in our neighborhood for the most part, and uh, shooting um, street photography, travel photography, Go to a cafe, sit down, order a coffee, plug in my SD to lightning port adapter, pop the card in, upload the, the files to my phone, and I'm able to do those adjustments and upload to Instagram. So that's the workflow that I'm using. Uh, basically, X100S. I got this off of uh, Craigslist, used in really good shape um, with um, an extra battery. I did actually buy a third battery because these things suck batteries. So I've got three batteries. It came with the, uh, the strap and I also have the um, half case and the full leather case, which I use the half case all the time. I always have the half case on this when I'm walking around um, just so, you know, if you it's hanging around my my neck, um, you know, just in case it bangs into something or whatever. It's kind of protecting the camera. And also, I just find that the, the, the half case is a really good grip. I got big hands. I mean, I shoot Nikon D3. I shoot Mamiya, um, you know, RB67 and AFD. And so I have big hands. I'm used to having, like, a good grip on my camera. The leather half case does that for me. Um, I don't have any of the accessories. I don't really need them. Uh, and then I have the, the full case just for, mainly for transport. Or if I'm going downtown or somewhere where I don't want, uh, I'm not gonna be necessarily using the camera the entire time. I'll put the, the full case on that. I can shove into my pocket when I'm not using it. The camera itself, I can put right into my shorts pocket. Um, so I'm using that camera, the, Lightning to SD, and then my iPhone uh, 7 Plus for a little bit of image touch-up, and then obviously uploading to Instagram. So anyways, that is my travel, walk-around, street photography rig for my trip in uh, December uh, and December 2017, January 2018, rocking a 2014 era camera uh, hey it does the job and it's fantastic so I highly recommend have a look on Craigslist I paid 600 Canadian for this whole setup with the case extra battery uh, strap you know it's it's almost too good to be true but it, you can buy them all day for that amount of money because they lack uh, primarily the Wi-Fi and then also the, the sensor size is a little bit small but hey 16 megapixels on Instagram, that's, you're, it's, you know, you don't need, you don't need a 40 or 50 megapixel camera to be uploading to uh, Instagram. And I shoot, um, I shoot uh, medium format for the other stuff as well anyway. So 
I will be doing another video on that, what I brought along with me for that, uh, studio photography, fashion editorial, advertising photography, while I'm in Vietnam. But that's my uh, travel video. Thanks for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't on YouTube. And check out my Instagram, Jimmy McKenzie 72 on Instagram. Uh, give me a, a follow there and, uh, and, and send, me a, send me a message. I'd love to see what you guys are out there doing. Uh, put in comments below what you're up to, what you're shooting for travel photography. Uh, it's not all about the latest and greatest. Sometimes it's just about what works. And uh, in, in this case, the X100S fits the bill for me. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope to see you again soon.